time to meet your matchups. We're looking for the fantasy players with the most favorable matchups of the week, starting with a quarterback, Marcus Grant. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers. I mean, the guy has been lights out so far through the first three weeks of the season, averaging uh, just about 295 passing yards. He's got nine touchdowns, no interceptions, facing a Falcons defense that has been shredded through the air. They've given up 12 total touchdowns to quarterbacks, four touchdown passes to Russell Wilson in week one, four to the combination of Mitch Trubisky and Nick Foles in week three. And then, yeah, Dak Prescott run for three touchdowns in week two. This feels like a perfect spot for Aaron Rodgers to stay hot. Well, Marcus, you say Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to uh, raise you a Dak Prescott going against the Cleveland Browns. And I think, again, we've seen what this offense has been able to do, the weapons that you're having. You see Wilson here being able to impact the game. Dak has too many weapons for this Cleveland secondary who's allowed uh, top 10 fantasy quarterbacks in two of the last three games. The one game, it was uh, Dwayne Haskins. So I think if you have Dak Prescott, it looks like his his uh, matchup, not only this week, but go- coming forward is going to be, or going forward is going to be a great one for him. Yeah, both Aaron Rodgers and Dak are great options, but I'm going to go a little bit. I'm going to go off menu here. I'm going to go with Joey Burrow, who is currently the quarterback 10 in fantasy football ahead of the likes of guys like Lamar Jackson, which is great for the late round QB community. But he's got a good matchup this week against Jacksonville, who've allowed the fifth most fantasy points to quarterbacks this season. And Burrow is coming off two consecutive games with at least 300 passing yards and two touchdowns. So he's a great start this week. Not reluctant at all to air it out on the 2020 Cincinnati Bengals. Let's get to the ground and find some running backs, MJD. Well, yeah, I'm going to go with Melvin Gordon. I think Melvin Gordon right now with Philip Lindsay, we don't know what his status is. He's limited. We don't know if he's going to play Thursday night. But the Jets, the Jets have given up uh, fourth most fantasy points per game to running backs this season. Melvin Gordon is going to be the guy they're going to start in their third string quarterback. You know they're going to lean on him both in the running game and the passing game. Good thing they signed him uh, this year in free agency. Yeah, they had that in the preseason. MJD, something else you told us in the preseason, the Rams are going to start to lean on Daryl Henderson more as the season goes on. And he was gashing the Bills in Buffalo on Sunday. Next up, it's the Giants. A game at SoFi, a, a team that's given up almost 30 points a game to the running back position. Sean McVay says he thinks Henderson is going to be the starter. That's enough for me. I'm going with Daryl Henderson. Well, I'm going to go with Dalvin Cook. All right. Uh, sure, I'll go with Dalvin Cook here in this situation because I think I think the Vikings, we know they want to run the football plenty, which certainly leans toward Dalvin Cook getting some opportunities. They've had to throw it because they find themselves either falling behind or playing in high-scoring games. But I think they want to kind of control the ball, control the clock. You can do that against this Houston Texans team because no team has given up more rushing yards than Houston. They've allowed a 100-yard rusher in two of three games. So this is like another chance for Dalvin Cook to have, you know, to put together back-to-back quality fantasy outings. What a quality fantasy outing. How about this wide receiver that went off on Sunday afternoon, Madam Frank? Yes, well, Alan Lazard has been doing pretty well because he scored at least 18 fantasy points in two of the three games that he's played, or two of the three games this season. And this really speaks to a feather in the cap of the of the of the Packers GM who did not draft a wide receiver this year, leaning on guys like Alan Lazard to step up. And that's what we've seen. And so he's got a great matchup this week against the Atlanta Falcons. They've allowed the third most fantasy points to wide receivers this season. They've had a top five, or excuse me, they've they've had five top 20 fantasy wide receivers. We saw last week, Tony Miller got him. Allen Robinson got him. This is a great matchup for the Packers. And I'm, I'm fearful for that Falcons secondary. All right, well, for me, it's going to be DeAndre Hopkins. I think DeAndre Hopkins is a guy that he, I know he didn't practice uh, today because of an ankle injury, but again, he gets 35% of the targets. I don't care who he's playing. They're going to throw him a third. They're going to throw him a third of the passes. That means you play this young man. He's going against the Carolina Panthers, who have given up uh, top five fantasy wide receivers two straight games. I know he'll be out there. I'm not worried about it. If you have DeAndre Hopkins, play him. Promise you that he's going to go off. 
Well, a guy that uh, I think is going to go up this week is Devontae Parker for the Miami Dolphins. This is a reminder. You can start your wide receivers against the Seattle Seahawks. The Legion of Boom days appear to be gone in the Pacific Northwest. No team has faced more pass attempts this season than Seattle. And Parker himself, he's second on the team in target share, second in air yards. And because the Seahawks have decided to let Russ cook, this means that Ryan Fitzpatrick and the Dolphins should have to go to the air quite a bit in order to stay in this football game. And that bodes well for Parker. Just always must-see TV with the 2020 Seattle Seahawks. Looking forward to seeing uh, how much Fitz magic uh, he can put up in that one. You guys, you, we are a team here uh, on NFL Fantasy Live. And what better way to strengthen that bond uh, than to have some trust fall? Cynthia Freeland uh, will join us now e each week here on NFL.com as well. Cynthia posts one stat to trust and one stat to question. Uh, Cynthia, what fantasy stat do you trust this week? Well, I trust that when you see increasing air yards and increasing targets with increasing air yards, you want to target that player in fantasy. Now, one that's going to increase is Allen Robinson with Nick Foles under center and, you know, out of the shotgun. And in dropping back all the different ways that Nick Foles is going to target him, you will see deeper passes, more opportunities, and a bigger potential for Allen Robinson to sneak into that top 12, maybe even top 10 tier. So if you look to see, okay, last week we only got a half, but he did have three three last week in that half as opposed to you know the Trubisky only had two so you're starting to see a little increase but this forecast increased quite a bit more all right so that's one that we can feel good about uh what stat is should we be looking at kind of sideways Cynthia well, when you look to see Drew Brees in those short air yard target situation and say, oh, no, his arm strength might not be great or what's going on. Sure, his air yards per target is very low. It's under five. It's lowest in the league. But this is how Drew Brees in the Saints offense operates. They've always been low. He has never ranked higher than 28th in this metric since 2016 when Next Gen Stats started to actually measure it. So this is how their offense operates. Do not worry, especially when Michael Thomas gets back. You can target everyone in this offense, especially against the Detroit Lions this week. All right, let's start with the wideouts. Uh, give the people a couple starts. I'm going to go with Odell Beckham Jr., who I think, listen, he's one of my favorite players in the league. I love him. And with his current situation, you can't always start him. Like, he's in this run-based offense. It's like having Gordon Ramsay work, you know, flipping burgers at some fast food place. It's not always going to work out, but every once in a while, you're going to get a great burger. And this is the matchup against the Dallas Cowboys, who have allowed the second most fantasy points per game to wide receivers this season. I know a lot of it came last week in Seattle, but they've been susceptible. So I think that Odell Beckham Jr. is a great start this week, and we will stick in Ohio. I like Tyler Boyd against the Jags. I was talking about Joey Burrow in the A block. Oops, sorry, using TV vernacular there, but it looks to me like Tyler Boyd is the receiver to start for that offense. He's had at least 20 points in back-to-back -back games. I know T. Higgins made quite a splash last week, but for consistency's sake, we're going to stick with Tyler Boyd. All right, uh, let's look over at some sits for wide receivers. Who's the Gordon Ramsay not doing anything related to cooking? <laughs> That is DJ Moore. And again, this is a player that I like a lot. I think he's a great player. And as always, check the NFL.com rankings before you make any decisions. But what we've seen out of him this season is that he's averaging around 13 fantasy points per game, hasn't gotten into the end zone. He's had fewer than 10 points in two of three. And he's got a really tough matchup against the Cardinals this week, who've allowed the fewest fantasy points to wide receivers. So I do believe that a breakout will come at some point for DJ Moore, probably not going to be this week. And another receiver I'm avoiding is another player that I like a lot, and it's Terry McLaurin. And he's been good. He's the wide receiver 18, but his quarterback play has not been great. And, and already um, Ron Rivera has intimated that Dwayne Haskins might not be the starter for long. So when I look at that situation and I look at going up against the Baltimore Ravens, who've allowed only one wide receiver to be in the top 20 this season, this is a matchup again where if I have other options, if you're in a two receiver league, you're probably going to want to start one of your bench options. Yeah, as you said, Terry, so, so much promise uh, throughout the season. Tough matchup for him there. Let's look over at the quarterbacks now, Rick. Uh, who is getting that Adam Rank seal of approval uh, to start here in week four? 
I'm going to go with Deshaun Watson, who's got a great matchup against the Vikings, who are a nice Merlot. You know why? Because they're Vino. They're Vikings in name only. This isn't a good defense anymore. It's not It's not 2015. You can start players against this Vikings defense. And even though it's been disappointing this season for Deshaun Watson, it seems like he could use the number one wideout, but that's a story for another day. He's still got a great matchup. He's thrown at least 250 yards in all three starts this season. The Vikings have allowed the third most passing yards per game this year. Love this matchup. Love this as a bounce back game for Deshaun Watson. And I also love Ryan Fitzpatrick this week. I know he's in he's in that mode again where he's keeping the player we want to see play on the bench. Well, not everybody. My friend Keith, who loves Ryan Fitzpatrick, is loving this. But this is his stretch. This is where Ryan Fitzpatrick goes out and does his thing. And now he's got a matchup against the Seahawks who like who, who like the Vikings are a, a, a team, a, a relic of the past of like, oh yeah, they've got the lore, but it's 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 different. It's the Legion of Boom is different now. It's not Lex Luthor, it's his brother, Mark. So now it's a different team. You can start Ryan Fitzpatrick. He should be one of the highest scoring quarterbacks of the week. Different team, but the laundry's the same, right? Which which plays with yes. your mind. You want to try to figure out uh, how things are going to continue. Uh, who are we going to sit at that position, right? Well, we're going to sit Phillip Rivers this week. And honestly, he's played well as a quarterback. I know you're going to show some bad passes here. But listen, the Colts are winning games. That's what you want. But he's not scoring fantasy points, even against great matchups. He's the quarterback 30 this season. He's had fewer than 15 fantasy points in every game and has not been a top 20 quarterback at any point this season. The Bears have been really good against quarterbacks this year. So this is an easy bench spot for me. And we'll also go back to Kirk Cousins, who was good last week. He had three touchdown passes. He made Justin Jefferson look like an all-pro all pro player. But the one thing that we really notice about this matchup, and it goes back to something that Marcus was saying as I was trying to interrupt him because I was so excited to say, you should start Dalvin Cook in this game because the Texans allow so many points and yards on the ground that that means that Mike Zimmer, who does not like to throw the football, is going to hand the ball off an awful lot. So we're going to keep Kirk Cousins on the bench. Yeah, something he absolutely loves to do, and a couple of people who got fired can definitely vouch uh, for that. We got more of ranked starts and sits for week four coming up in a bit as he tackles the running backs and tight ends. Uh, but for now, we're going to keep the quarterback theme going here on NFL Fantasy Live. Let's check the FedEx air rankings, Marcus. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah, you know, normally at the start of the season, we like to break players down into positional tiers. So that way you sort of have an idea of a player's approximate value rather than just trying to go off a straight ranking. But now we've played three weeks. We have seen some games. We've got a little bit of additional data. So in order to try to help you swing a trade in case you're not happy with your quarterback production right now, I've got some new quarterback tiers for the rest of 2020. So let's start at the top. No surprise, Patrick Mahomes makes it into the first tier for me, along with Russell Wilson and Josh Allen has crept into my top tier of quarterbacks. I know that it seems like sort of a surprise. We certainly wouldn't have thought this at the beginning of the year, but Allen looks like he's improved as a passer. Plus, you know, he can still run the football, so when the weather turns nasty in Buffalo, his value doesn't necessarily fall off a cliff because he's probably going to be the goal line back for the Buffalo Bills. Now over to tier two. You got a bunch of great, talented guys there. Dak Prescott, Kyler Murray, who's having a fantastic season. Lamar Jackson maybe drops down into that second tier after being a tier one guy last year. Aaron Rodgers, who looks like he is sort of trying to silence the haters and the doubters this year. And Deshaun Watson. And for me, this is more about sort of reminding people maybe not to panic too much on guys like Lamar Jackson, on guys like Deshaun Watson. You heard Adam Rank talk about how he would like to start Watson this week. I think if you look at Lamar, game on Monday night. If some of his players maybe hold on to some of those throws a little bit more, it's a different evening and maybe we feel differently about Lamar on Tuesday morning. And in the third tier of quarterbacks for 2020, Cam Newton is on that list. Matt Ryan, who's been pretty hot for most of the season for the Falcons. Jared Goff, who's having a very nice 2020 so far. Ryan Tannehill makes it into that list for me as well. Joe Burrow and Ben Roethlisberger. And maybe the biggest name, the biggest surprise I should say in this group 
is Joe Burrow. And I know there were expectations for him coming into the season, but I think people still had their doubts about exactly what he could do in the Bengals offense. Certainly, there's still a lot more season to go, but considering how much Zach Taylor is letting his rookie quarterback throw the football, there seems to be a reason to believe that he can continue to put up these sorts of numbers all year long. It is time for more money, more problems with Mo Jones Drew. Uh, today, MJD is putting his valuation on three wide receivers who you might be tempted to elevate into your starting lineups after big performances uh, back in week three. MJD, Alan Lazard got the targets from Aaron Rodgers uh, with Devontae Adams out. Is he Mo Money or Mo Problems this week? Well, as the, the viewers can see, you see this shirt I'm wearing is green because it's money time, and Alan Lazard is definitely in there. Money. He is Mo Money, Mo Money, Mo Money. Now, regardless of if Devontae money. Adams is out there or not, this young man here is going to go out there and make plays. I mean, you see the speed. My only question is, why wasn't he doing that when he was with the Jacksonville Jaguars? That's what we needed. But if you need him in fantasy, he's definitely a good wide receiver number two. He's going to get a ton of targets. And as you see, Aaron Rodgers loves him when he wipes that sweat off his brow. Uh, and we love seeing players taking care of each other. Justin Jefferson uh, was being taken care of by Kirk Cousins uh, on Sunday. Went off over 170 receiving yards. Is he more money, MJD, or is he going to bring you some problems? Well, Justin Jefferson is definitely Mo Money, and I'm going to tell you why. And, and the, the reason is, is they decided to put move him to the outside. He was a slot defender for the first couple of weeks. You finally move him outside. You get him to run some of these outside routes. Uh, Kirk Cousins is much better throwing the ball outside, kind of what he did with Stephon Diggs. And you saw the performance. This young player is very talented. I expect to see more of this. Adam Thielen is going to get some covers rolled to him. But this young man here can make all the uh, catches and plays with the ball in his hands. And he, he allows it to be easier for Kirk Cousins. So hopefully you got him. Don't be like me and drop him this week. Uh, I dropped him week three. He scores, you know, all these points. And then I can't pick him up because someone else swiped him. It's, what am I doing? Yeah. It's always tough. Always tough. We got two uh, infusions of cash there to start. Let's go to said Wilson, uh, MJD. Everybody was trying to pick the Cowboys wide out that would go off against the Seahawks. So that was said Wilson. Mo money and mo problems. This is, a, this is going to be a problem for me uh, for two reasons. One, it makes me feel old because I played against his father. Um, but two, I'll say this. They have too many receivers there. You, you C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup, uh, Mari Cooper. I mean, there's too many miles to feed. And if, if I'm going to start the number four receiver, uh, it would have been for that Seahaw against that Seahawks defense. It wouldn't have been against uh, anyone else. So I, I'm going to kind of stay away from him. If he continues to make plays, then I'll decide to pick him up. But this is just a problem for me. Marcus, MJD, which running backs uh, do you see moving up the scoring leaders list this week? Yeah, we're going to find out. I mean, we've had a few running backs that we thought were going to have breakout seasons this year but have not yet had a breakout game. But uh, we do think there could be a couple that have their best performances of the year coming up this week. So, Maurice, which guy are you eyeing you expect to have a big performance this week? Well, Marcus, I've been waiting on, on the Bengals to start running the ball the way they're throwing the ball. And I think Joe Mixon is the guy. If you can't turn around and hand, hand the ball off to him, you should turn around and throw the ball to him. He's a tremendous receiver out of the backfield. I know he's only averaged nine fantasy points this season, but the Jags of uh, the Jaguars, who they're going to play, has allowed fifth most uh, receptions to running backs this season and fifth most uh, rushing attempts. So the Bengals are playing well. Hopefully they can try to get a lead or be in this game and they can get the ball to this tremendous talent that they have that they just paid a lot of money to. I've always been one. If I pay you, I need to use you. You need to affect my life somehow, some way. Hopefully the Bengals go out, uh, feel that way as well. Yeah, I've been waiting for big things for Joe Mixon. I've also been waiting for big things from Kenyon Drake. And we love the fact that he has been acknowledging his fantasy managers and, and telling us to hold on, that good things are coming. Well, I think this is the week that those good things finally arrive. He gets the Carolina Panthers, who've given up the second most fantasy points per game to running backs. They've allowed seven rushing touchdowns so far. That's the most in the league. You like Drake's usage. He's getting about 20 touches per game. And so you hope this is the start of big things because the next uh, few weeks, the schedule's certainly a lot more forgiving than it was at the start of the season. So here's to hoping that Kenyon Drake can really turn things around. All right, for more on running backs, we'll hand it off to Patrick and Adam. Yeah, let's keep it on the ground, get some more starts and sits on the running back position. Which guys are you making sure in your lineups this week, right? Well, I'm going to go with Jonathan Taylor. And I know you might be surprised that I'm having an objectionable or objective view, I should say, but he's been very consistent this season, averaging over 13 fantasy points per game. He's had a rushing touchdown in back-to-back -back contests. Plus, the Bears 
are a team that you can exploit on the ground. They've allowed four rushing touchdowns this season. That's the third most in the NFL. They're clearly missing Eddie Goldman. And Austin Eckler is another, another running back that I'm starting this week. 11 receptions against the Carolina Panthers in week three. Obviously, having Justin Herbert there has made a huge difference. He's averaging seven and a half receptions per game with the rookie quarterback. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have allowed the fourth most receptions per game to running backs this season with eight. All right, let's get some sits at the running back spot. Well, I'm going to go with Todd Gurley for the reason that we like Austin Eckler. The biggest disappointment with Todd Gurley is that they're just not using him as a receiver out of the backfield. He's had two targets or fewer in two straight games, and he's starting to also lose some snaps. He's played 51% of the snaps or fewer in two or three games, and that to me is just not what you can trust. He's a flex option at best. And we also are really concerned about Leonard Fournette. He's had fewer than five fantasy points in two of three games. He's played in just 28% of the snaps, and he's got a tough matchup this week against the LA Chargers, who've allowed the fourth fewest fantasy points per game to running backs this season. Yeah, trending uh, downward for Leonard Fournette here these past couple of weeks, or at least last week in specifics. Uh, let's look over some tight ends, Rank. Who are we putting on the field? Well, I'm going to go with Jimmy Graham. That's right. I'm on. I'm on objective again, baby. I'm a homer. No, but really, Jimmy <laughs> Graham has been fantastic this season. Three touchdowns in three games. His seven red zone targets lead the team. And when Nick Foles came into the game, he targeted Jimmy Graham an awful lot. And I understand this is the toughest matchup he could possibly face. The Colts have given up the fewest amount of points to fantasy tight ends this season. I'm still confident enough to get him into my lineup. I'm also really confident in TJ Hawkinson this week going up against the New Orleans Saints. He's the tight end 10, which is pretty good. He's had at least four receptions and at least 50 receiving yards in all three games this season. And the New Orleans Saints have allowed the most fantasy points to tight ends this year. So I love TJ Hawkinson this week. On the other side of what tight ends are we putting on the bench, Frank? Well, I'm probably not going to be going with Hayden Hurst this week. This is a tough matchup against the Green Bay Packers. They've allowed the ninth fewest receptions per game to tight ends. And we really haven't seen Hayden Hurst step up. Now, he did get that touchdown last week which was amazing. You're like, oh my gosh, 7.1 right off the bat, right when you, that, that one yard touchdown, you're like, this is going to be a huge game. And then at the end of that contest, he had 7.1. That was it. So unfortunately, I need a little bit more volume out of my tight end position. So I'm going to look at some other guys. Their most challenging questions they face in their flex spot. Uh, we start here with Brandon Hughes. Who, who wants to know which player to flex in his PPR league, Michael Gallup, John Brown, or David Montgomery, Cynthia? Who are you going to? Brandon, you picked the perfect day. I wore my glasses. That means I'm extra smart. I'm going with David Montgomery on this one. I think this is <laughs> going to be a really interesting game in this offense. Obviously, you had Nick Foles getting the start, so more passes, but also more rushing. You know why? I think the upset happened, so that means the Bears will be playing from ahead in the second half, which means more volume for David Montgomery. All right, let's look over at this from Juan. He wants to know, Miles Gaskin or Gage at the flex? Gage still questionable. Uh, Marcus, how do you feel? Yeah, I, I'm going to lean toward Miles Gaskin on this one, I mean, partially because Gage is questionable. But even if he was healthy, uh, I'm still a little bit concerned, mostly because of the Julio Jones issue, and that certainly impacts whether or not Russell Gage will get a lot of open looks underneath. Meanwhile, Miles Gaskin, he's playing about two-thirds of the snaps, getting 18 touches per game. He's third on the team in targets. And I mentioned Miami might have to throw the football a lot to stay in this game with Seattle. So uh, I like Miles Gaskin. I like what he's shown in Miami, and I like his opportunity. All right, let's get a running back question for MJD. This uh, from Yakov. Um, Kareem Hunt or Todd Gurley, MJD? Uh, that, that's definitely a tough one. I, I'm going to go with Kareem Hunt. I understand Todd Gurley is going to be the guy, and, and they, they throw the ball. But to me, I want a running back and on, on a running team. That's the Cleveland Browns, who also can catch the ball out of the backfield. And when he's in the game, they put him in to try to get him the ball. And Baker Mayfield feels very comfortable throwing him the rock all over the field. I love what he's brought to this offense and what he's brought to the, uh, this team. I think Kareem Hunt will mess around and be a, a running back number two by the end of the season. We have returned here on NFL Fantasy Live, and it's time 
to open that microwave and heat up some waiver wire leftovers. You might not have uh, gotten first dibs on the top 10 most added players on the waiver wire this week. Like you see Justin Jefferson flying uh, real quick. 45% added there for the wide out of Minnesota. Uh, so who's left to pick up, right? Well, I'm going to look at Hunter Renfro and coming into the season, or I would say before the NFL draft, he was everybody's favorite sleeper. And then the Raiders went out, drafted two wideouts, and that kind of ended that. But because of the injuries that the Raiders have suffered over the last couple of weeks, he's starting to work himself back into prominence. Nine targets last week, six receptions, 84 yards, and a touchdown. Good matchup this week against the Bills, who've allowed the eighth most fantasy points to wide receivers. Yeah, Renfro's been a nice safety blanket for uh, Derek Carr. You know what? I know everybody wants normalcy in 2020. I think the one normalcy thing, normal thing that Eagles fans don't want is injuries to their wide receivers, but here we are again. Uh, in week three, the Eagles snap count leaders at wide receiver, Greg Ward, John Hightower, Deontay Burnett. They are shorthanded at the position, but Ward played well. Eight catches, 72 yards, and a touchdown. You can add Dallas Goddard now to the list of injured Eagles. So this is a guy that's going to see a lot of opportunity until Philly can get healthy at the wide receiver position. Okay, talking about healthy, John Brown hasn't been healthy, and you do want to get a piece of this Buffalo offense. Let me introduce you to Gabriel Davis, the fourth-round pick out of UCF. He's only averaged 7.7 fantasy points per game this season. I get it. That is low. But he caught four of his four targets for 81 yards versus the Rams last week. That's week three. That was 12.1 fantasy points. That is an interesting note here because Buffalo obviously plays the Raiders this week. And that's a team that you want to target their secondary. If John Brown isn't able to go, that could be a great option for you. Similar idea for me, Cynthia. I'll see your Gabe Davis and raise you a clean Cole Beasley. Uh, also won a piece of that Bills offense. And he went over the century mark against the Rams. And it wasn't nickel and diamond. He had 16.7 yards uh, per catch. And a defense, as you mentioned, that doesn't offer that much resistance at that part of the field. Uh, the Bills offense more wide open than ever. Uh, I say it's fine to react positively uh, to what was a great performance uh, from Cole Beasley there. Yeah, another player you might want to keep an eye on, too, is Mo Ali Cox. If you need some help at the tight end position, he's got a great matchup against the Bears this week, who've allowed a top 20 tight end in two of the last three games and could be a good option for you.